I'm Caitlin Henderson from Waffle TV and joining me on the couch today is well-known magician Pete Burke. Welcome Pete. Thank you, nice to be here. And um, so Pete, what's it like performing at the French? Um, I love performing at the French, this is my sixth uh, Edinburgh uh, show and uh, I wouldn't keep coming back if I didn't like it. I love the vibe up here, I love coming up with a new new show each year and, uh, and actually writing the show and generating the material is fun for me. But the atmosphere up here is is uh, unlike anything. You know, I've done a few international festivals, yeah. uh, Montreal, and a couple of others, yeah. and Edinburgh is uh, is the top one. It's just so really? lovely. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, when were you first exposed to magic, like as a child? Uh, probably when I was uh, quite young, probably like six or seven. Maybe saw magic mm -hmm. on TV. You probably don't remember the Paul Daniels magic show, you look too young. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Um, I'm 20. I'm terrified. <laughs> terrified. Uh, yeah, I saw the Paul Daniels magic show when I was a, a real young kid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then I, I obviously enjoyed it and my mum and dad bought me a, a magic set for a Christmas or a birthday or something like that. And then um, I was bitten by the book, learned all of the tricks in the set, made them sit down, Watch like a four hour magic show. Yeah, I'm sure they loved it. yeah well they, <laughs> same they, trick after another. Exactly. They pretended to love it even yeah. if they didn't love it and that was that was nice. Yeah, exactly. That kept me going. Yeah. Um, so um, you won a few talent shows at school when you were younger, you performed in front of people. How was it at school growing up trying to get people to take you seriously like about your magic? Uh well it was at that time it was just my uh, hobby, you yeah. know, a couple of other kids were in the recorder group. Yeah. Uh, maybe one guy had a little ventriloquist doll, yeah. and I was just doing magic tricks. And uh, yeah, I did, I did the talent show, and you know, people were singing songs, whatever. I just did my little magic show, and uh, went down well. Won it two years on the trot. That's a record yet to yeah, be reached. Really yeah, good. Exactly. So yeah. you must have had talent coming in. Exactly. Ninety-one, ninety-two. <laughs> Keeping scoring. Consecutive years. Um, you performed in pubs as well, but yep. you finally got noticed when you sent a video of yourself doing magic in your underpants yeah. in the snow. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I saw a wanted uh, advert on, online for a, a TV production company we're looking for, for new magicians and uh, they wanted showreels and I didn't have one so I just uh, met up with a friend yeah. a sat on a Saturday afternoon and he had a camcorder yeah. and we just messed around and part of that messing around involved me. Get through, I, I didn't think I'd get that. through yeah. and we just sort of had a laugh yeah. and I, yeah, it seemed like a good idea to take off all my clothes and stuff. Yeah. In hindsight, it's, it's actually a little bit seedy, but uh, <laughs> it seemed to do the trick anyway, you know, yeah, I got the gig, exactly. so, uh, so yeah, no, it worked out quite well. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you sold some of your secrets when you published a book on tricks to yeah. trick out your friends. Yeah. In it you detail how to bite glass, swallow knives, yeah. and I think how to crack your nose. Yeah. So was your mom always supportive of your magic? Yeah, well, growing up? you know what, when I first, yeah. actually when I first started doing Edinburgh, my first couple of years, I did some pretty outlandish uh, tricks in my uh, show. I did some kind of grosser things. Yeah put some like barbecue skewers through my arms and I uh, I blended up a mouse in a food processor. I mean, typical children's party <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, nice Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just that was the kind of stuff I was in at the time. And yeah, uh, yeah my my mother wasn't best pleased. Yeah. But uh, yeah, slightly slightly more gross than the type of stuff I was doing for my, my Paul Daniels magic set. But um, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're fine. And the book was the book was great actually to do because um, after the magic set that I mentioned, I uh, I got a magic book, and that's sort of what really got me yeah. into it. So I always I always had this ambition that I wanted to to write a magic book and put that out there, and perhaps you know inspire some of the other people to get yeah. into tricks. So where do you get like your new material from? Like, what do you I always wonder this with magicians. What do they think of? Like, well, I just I've got like a I've got a notebook. Uh, and whenever I get like a crazy, like the, the, the blender thing yeah. that I mentioned, <laughs> that I actually did that and that was just like a, you know, an idea, one sentence, uh, blend up mouse in food processor and that was like an idea for a trick and I left it in the book for ages and then when it came time for the festival, sort of dig out the book, yeah. you see an idea that maybe, you know, you, you revisit and you think, well how am I going to make this work yeah. and then you just got to figure out how the trick is done. Yeah. That's the difficult part. Yeah. You know, the one sentence is easy. You can make well, that many uh, well, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's only, it's only a couple of good inches, so, um, so they don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh.
So um, what would you have done if you didn't make it as a magician? Well, I actually didn't, but it was not my intention to, to do magic as a job. Oh. I wanted to be an actor, that's what I wanted to oh, do. Right. I did a theatre uh, degree at oh. university and I wanted to, to, to be an actor. And then I saw that advert and my yeah. life sort of took a different a different path, but um, I'm very, you know, happy and I'm, yeah, I'm glad definitely. it went that way. You know. so successful. It was never part of the plan, you know, it was never really the goal, it just kind of all happened naturally, which is nice. Yeah, and so you've performed at the Fringe since 2007, you yeah. toured the UK. Were you born then? <laughs> <laughs> you've um, toured the UK, you performed alongside Darren Brown. Yeah. Do you ever get nervous beforehand? Always. I was yeah. uh, pacing lots last yesterday was the first yeah. my first show. How pacing did it lots. Go over, right? It was yeah, I mean the audience were very nice. I personally I felt a little bit uh, under pressure yeah. and a bit nervous. And I first do, show yeah, yeah, I do yeah. still get uh, nervous and um, those butterflies and apprehensive yeah. and everything. But the audience were very nice. Uh, I came off and I sort of thought, well, you need to do this, this and this, yeah. and I'll make some changes and, and do it a slightly different way tonight. But as a first go, it was, I enjoyed it, it was yeah. good. Yeah. So, um, what do you do if a trick goes wrong, or no one laughs, uh, or well, <laughs> awkward silence? <laughs> yeah, uh, if no one laughs, that's a, that's that, that hurts, that's yeah. a bit painful. But if a trick goes wrong, what's good is nobody knows what to expect, yeah. nobody knows what's meant yeah, to happen. I plan. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, or you can take it in a different direction. Yeah. And, uh, uh, nothing's nothing's really gone disastrously wrong. Yeah. So, apart from the maps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We wish you best of luck. Thank you. Fringe. And if you'd like to go see Peak, he's on between the first and the twenty-sixth of August at the Pleasance.